the oldest female humans come from southern Africa, just where the Sumerians claim we started. Pretty odd coincidence, isn't it? Let's talk about how they did it. They did it with genetic engineering, in the house of fashioning, according to the Sumerians. In the house of fashioning, where they created not us, but the domesticated plants and animals. And they go over the process, and it's very long, and it's very detailed, and they make a lot of mistakes. It's not easy for them to do, to make a sentient being. We'll work on fruit flies and we do okay. Try to make something like us, you know, Dolly the clone, we saw all the trouble that they had with that. It's not that easy to make a real complex, complicated sentient being. Made a lot of mistakes, had a lot of uh, false alarms, but they eventually did it. And okay, with us, as I said, they were making a lot of mistakes, but they were making a slave and they had a deadline. They had a revolt they were trying to quell and they had to get it done and they couldn't waste time. So they're making mistakes. Here you see our full complement of 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. And here you see 28 of our major, our major genetic deformities. We have, guess how many? Over 4,000 and counting genetic deformities. Now, does that make sense for a species only about 200,000 years old? No. Furthermore, if we descended from chimps and gorillas, we, they should have everything we've got, or pretty much a lot of what we've got, and they don't. They have albinism and a few others, but not many. They have very few. All wild animals, all wild plants have very few genetic defects. Why? Because in the wild, what happens to a faulty copy? Get rid of it. Parents won't let it go. They will not let it get up to put their defect into the gene pool. But more importantly, several of these you're looking at here kill you dead before you can reach maturity. <laughs> How would that get in the gene pool? How would that go from Eskimos to Watusis? The only way is if it was there at the very beginning of the species and it spread out as we multiplied in numbers. And the only way so many defects could get in there is mistakes in the cutting and splicing process as we were being assembled. It's the only way. And they didn't care. Because why? They're making a slave. What do they care if they kill one in a hundred? What if they care if they kill one in ten? As long as they got some coming out that work right. And they knew they would because they knew the numbers game here. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is really amazing to me. It is a comparison of human, chimpanzee, gorilla, and orangutan chromosomes. And you see how really similar they are. And you always hear about how similar we are. You know, 95 percent, 90 percent sharing the DNA and all. So it really makes it look like, it really makes it look like we descended from them. But they don't mention that we share about 50 percent. You'd be looking at a lot of similarity with a mouse up there. It's amazing. It's amazing how you can be fooled by these things. But let's talk for a minute about what the what Anunnaki were up against when they wanted to create us, when they wanted to create a creature in their own image after their own likeness. And they said, well, okay, we're not really well adapted to Earth. And we know that because in the cylinder fields, they're always shown, as you saw those gods, fully dressed, fully clothed, with things on their heads, and the humans are standing there, you know, maybe in loincloths or naked. The humans are, are better adapted to the planet than they are. So they said, okay, we're not really well adapted. Let's take some genes from the creatures of Earth. And they say that we shall build, the, take some of the creatures of Earth and, and use it as a model. So let's assume they use an arm like Xana. And so we've got some of her genes, but mostly we're going to have their genes where they want us to be like them. But they've got a problem, and it's a big one, because they themselves must have, must have 46 chromosomes. Why? Because we, among primates, alone among primates, have 46 chromosomes. And so when they start with the Alma, they've got a creature with 48 chromosomes, because all the primates on Earth have 48 chromosomes. So you've got 48 chromosomes here, and you're the Anunnaki, and you've got 46. How are you going to put this together? How are you going to make a living zygote to begin the process of, of manipulating? How are you going to do that? You've either got to do one of two things. With the, the sperm and the egg, you're going to be looking at a 24-23 mismatch in chromosomes. 
How are you going to make that? You're not. You've got to add a chromosome to the 23 or take away a chromosome from the 24, which would be the creature of Earth, or add a chromosome to your own self, neither of which will work because you won't have the same creature, and it's just too much DNA to fool with. You can't do it. There's only one way to solve this problem. You have to take the 48 chromosome, the one with the 48 chromosomes, and you have to fuse two of them together so that they only take up one space and now you've got, even though you've got 48 chromosomes, it's taken up one space and you can match it up with a 23 and you can get to work. Am I right? Do you understand me? Next slide. Look at our second one here with the orangutan, second and third, gorilla second and third, chimp second and third, but human, uh-oh, somebody fused those two together. Now, we're told Mother Nature did that somehow, some way, you know, it's like, Everything else had just happened by magic. The Anunnaki did this. There's no way otherwise for that to happen. And it's some of the clearest evidence that there is. That we're genetically manipulated, genetically put together, and genetically created. And furthermore, we're told that we're like primates, that we're primates. When we don't have primate bones, we don't have primate muscles, we don't have primate skin, we don't have the, hy uh, the primate hair pattern on our body. They're light in front, thick on back, we're light on back, thick on front. What's that about? We don't have their heads, their brains, their arm length. We don't have anything that's primate. We don't have primate sexuality and we don't have the same number of chromosomes. How does that equal primate? It doesn't. 